ladder. Get out of there. Okay, testing one, two, three. Can you hear anything? Now, can I just try something? Uh, if I, I'm going to turn it down right now. Okay, so do you want me to... Um, I, I don't think that plays the commercials. I think it just plays our internet, what we say. So I'll probably pop that down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I may, uh, I may pop that down during the commercials. great okay Mark um, I th think we're getting close here what have you got for a time oh yeah they're getting ready to head on the field I'm gonna cr okay um, so yeah they've got like one minute to count down to zero so um, la 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 God, you're just tough at night. I mean, you must, be, you must be from the county, have that window open like that. Well, I, I really, <laughs> I'm just going to try it. I yeah. don't know. Uh, um, I just hope the lights stay on. The last time we were here for Dexter and Fox Rock during the regular season, everybody else was losing power. We lost a light down on your side, that light down there. That really? And they kept playing. Oh. <laughs> they what? kept playing. Because <laughs> Dexter was going that way, apparently. So I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to keep the stats. I'm going to keep the, the uh, scoring drive stuff. Okay. I'll just get the stats. Whatever yeah, and you I'm have at the it, end. It, it kind of, I'm very good early, and if I get behind, depending on how long yeah, the game goes, then I s kind of stop. Don't worry about it. I don't, uh, this is one of these games, really, I just want to get home. Yeah. And, okay, if you can uh, give me program mark, and we'll get started. Go ahead and find a spot, and we'll do it. Welcome to a cold and windy Oaks Field in Dover Foxcroft. And welcome to the LTC, the Class D North Regional Championship game. It's the Foxcroft Ponies against the Golden Bucks of Bucksport. And we welcome you aboard for the championship game. Dale Duff on the broadcast. I'm joined tonight by Ernie Clark of the Bangor Daily News. And Ernie, let's talk weather and the effect on this championship game first. What do you think? Well, I'll tell you what, it's 20 degrees at the bank downtown. <laughs> There's a 14 degree Arctic Clipper blowing from right to left and we're playing for a championship. That doesn't get your blood going. 
Time to see the cardiologist, don't you think? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> and Mayo Hospitals are not, not too, too far, far away. away. <laughs> and it's, you'll be having the wind behind you as you go there, too, which speeds it up. Uh, this this has the potential to be a great game. This is a, this is a great rivalry over the decades, really, between Bucksport and Foxcroft Academy. They haven't played each other for the last four years because Foxcroft's been up in C since they moved to four classes. But uh, now they're back in the same division. They've played once this year. Foxcroft has won. But uh, no reason to think we won't have a, a very competitive game here tonight. Well, before we get things started here, we're going to have a color guard. We have dual color guards here tonight. One's going to work their way to the Bucksport side of things, one to the Foxcroft side of things. And uh, then I believe we are going to have our national anthem played by the band over here. Can we uh, get this microphone and get ready to have our national anthem for you here on this night on LTC Championship Night? that you please remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by Foxcroft Academy graduate and assistant football coach, Mike Niles. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rock for our way to start our championship night here from uh, Dover Foxroth. We'll be calling out his son's name here, I'm sure, a few times as uh, he's one of their featured running backs tonight, too. He's got a, he's got a tough uh, second act to tough follow act Dad. to follow Dad, <laughs> Michaela uh, Niles, uh, in the backfield for Foxroth. You mentioned, you know, about the weather and how uh, it could affect this game. <laughs> Certainly the wind, as we're watching... Uh, uh, flags being uh, marched off the field uh, straight out because of the wind. It's got to affect the passing games for yeah. both teams. And uh, uh, the thought here is that Bucksport is more of a passing team, more reliant on a passing team. Chase Carmichael, the quarterback, of course, setting an LTC record for passing yardage uh, during the regular season and then throwing for nearly 200 yards last week in the uh, semifinal win over Madden Academy. Foxcroft does throw the ball as well. Nick Clawson, the third year starter at quarterback, has some talented receivers in uh, Hyatt Smith and Jeremy Richard, but uh, Clawson also uh, very much a running threat out of the backfield as well. Passed for a little over a thousand yards, rushed for uh, nearly 900 coming into this game. Uh, a, a major two-way weapon for the Ponies and uh, we'll see uh, if uh, both teams chose uh, choose to play a little bit more conservatively because of the wind and run the ball and see who wins that battle or we'll see if uh, if the teams stick uh, true to the form that's got them this far and attempt to uh, throw the ball uh, either with the wind at their back uh, more likely than uh, uh, when they're going into the wind uh, in opposite quarters. You mentioned the two quarterbacks, Chase Carmichael and Nick Clausen. I talked with the two coaches, Joel Sankey of Bucksport, Danny White of Foxroft, to talk about their senior quarterbacks and the battle ahead. <laughs> Every 
time he cuts to an interview, we lose his audio. Yes, it does. It just feels like an LTC final. I totaled up the numbers uh, somewhat close here, I think, for all the way through last week's semifinal playoff games. Nick Lawson, Foxcroft, 1,878 yards, 30 touchdowns. Chase Carmichael, 1,946 in passing, running offense, and 28 touchdowns. So combined, they have found the end zone 58 times in nine games. Yeah, doing it in different ways to be sure with Clawson uh, scoring more of his touchdowns on the ground and uh, Carmichael through the air, but uh, basically a couple of 2,000 yard total offense guys running these teams, indicative of the success they had during the season. Uh, both these teams uh, uh, maybe a little bit more offensive minded than defensive minded. And, and it's, uh, and it's gotten them this far, and now we're in conditions where defenses usually rule. So it'll be interesting to see yeah. how we uh, how we play the other way here uh, with a championship on the line. Well, the captains and the referees have uh, met at midfield. I believe that what happened down there was that Foxcroft won the toss and deferred. And so Bucksport will get the kick, and they will play into the win uh, in this quarter. This quarter. It'll be interesting to see how deep this kickoff goes here. Uh, they uh, probably can go as long as they want it to go because <laughs> the wind is at the back. The kick is going to be on a line. It's going to take a hop. And is it going to get into the end zone? Yes, it is. And in high school football, once it reaches the end zone, that's a touchback. And the play is dead. A little uh, shaky there on the uh, receiving part, though, because he probably <laughs> should have followed the ball in the end zone to make it get there because it. Uh, Started bouncing at about the 10 and uh, had to assume the way a football is going to bounce. I tell you, I don't know how anybody's going to hang on to the oh. football tonight. I just, you know, you hit me, uh, I'm carrying the football, and you hit me on a night like this, I'm fumbling every single time I touch it. And again, <laughs> none of the players are used to it because we haven't played in these kind of conditions all season. All right, Chase Carmichael, the senior center, is up under center. They're set in an offset eye formation. He's going to drop back a couple of steps, going to throw, and it's batted down. Batted down at the line of scrimmage. And uh, I think it was Dankert, they say, that made the uh, deflection, got his big old hand up in the air and knocked the pass down. That was going to be just a little slant pass, but it goes incomplete for the first play of the game. Yeah, Dankert playing on the uh, right defensive end there. And you look to see, not surprisingly, Bucksport looking to pass, but looking for the short passes so the wind isn't as much of a factor with the ball in the air. Wide outs to both sides. This one's going to be a pitch play, and it's to Tolomzoff. And he's going to get the corner, and he's going to get taken out of bounds. He'll get some decent yardage as Carter Tolomzoff picks up seven yards, they say, coming to this near side. Now, he had been a receiver all year long and a good one and he still does do some but last week we did the semifinal game against Lincoln and uh, he lined up as their tailback because Lucas Wardwell has been uh, injured he is back and he was out practicing and he's kind of been acting as a fullback but I think you're going to see uh, Tallman's off uh, carry the ball a lot here tonight yeah, he's a pretty good athlete I think he's also in the mix in the program in terms of the future as a quarterback yeah. so he do a lot of different things. Now here's Wardwell, and he touches for the first time, and he's stuck right at the line of scrimmage, which is uh, about the 25-yard line. And that's a fourth down, and now the Golden Bucks are going to have to punt it, and Ernie, they're going to have to punt it against that stiff wind. Yeah, that's the uh, 
the advantage of what Foxcroft chose to do there in terms of uh, using their defense to uh, to establish field position. And here, the Pony uh, defenders are lined up uh, not too far from midfield, so should be great field position for the Ponies. And it's Ricard who took over the kicking duties. He'll get it up to near midfield, and it'll be down at the 49-yard line. And so the Ponies, their first possession, they will have great field position here. 24 yards on the punt into the win. Actually, not terrible, but, uh, but still great field position for the Ponies in their first possession of the game. And so, senior quarterback Nick Clawson will be out there. Niles is their featured runner, and they got two just as. Uh, let's see here. The penalty, and it's going to go against the Golden Bucks. It's a big penalty, 15 yards before a play even started by uh, Boxcroft. Didn't see the call, but as it is, first down. Uh, Inside the 35 for the Ponies. I didn't see it either, but obviously uh, that's a biggie. If it's 15 yards, it's got to be some sort of a personal foul thing. And so instead of at the 49, make it the 34 yard line here as the Ponies go to work. High snap kept by Clawson, picks his way over the right side, just a yard or two, and getting tackles over there on that. Uh, right side and Clawson is down after a game looks like about one yard yeah and then of course the Bucksport defense is going to key on Clawson you mentioned the numbers in the pregame uh, over a thousand yards passing uh, uh, 850 yards or so rushing he's a two-way threat and they're going to look to uh, try to contain him first and then uh, take their chances with some of Foxcroft's other offensive weapons Two wideouts, Jeremy uh, Richard and Hyatt Smith. It's Clawson again. Runs the left side. He's got running room there. Still on his feet. Bouncing off defenders. He's got a first down. And he is inside the 20-yard line. First down and more for Nick Clawson. Yeah, plus 15 on the uh, gain. And you, what you saw there was his physicality. Uh, he was uh, looking for contact, bouncing off defenders, and moving forward all the way. And that really shouldn't come as a surprise. I found out the other day. He's graduating in January, and he's headed to the Marines. Really? Yeah. Wow. So he's got a plan already. And uh, looks like he's uh, in boot camp shape based on that play alone. How about that? Bucksport defense trying to stiffen up. Uh-oh, long snap goes over the head of Clawson, and he'll jump on it back at the 32-yard line. Oh, man, that the snap went way high in the air. No way Clawson could go up and jump up and get it. He had to just go back and fall on it, and they'll spot him down at the 31-yard line. That's a huge loss. Yeah, minus 13 there. Uh, again, all Clawson could do was fall on it and make sure he gained control and no chance to get that snap and now the ponies in a second long to be interesting to see how they attack this uh, second 23 whether or not they try to go through the air or uh, keep running assuming that they have three downs to get the first yeah they gotta get uh, down to about the seven yard line to pick up another first down here's a hand there's not much running room there that carry by Richard. Yeah, Richard, that was one of those jet sweeps. Uh, Richard, wide receiver on the right in motion, and gets, takes the handoff, and uh, Bucksport ready for it. Uh, just a one yard game. Richard and Smith, they've accounted for over 800 total yards of passing. And uh, a bunch of those receivers for Bucksport have obviously caught a lot, too, if you're Carmichael's throwing for over 1,500. So there's some. Uh, skill on the offensive side both both sides all right this one good snap gonna throw it goes deep down the right side jumping up making the catch that's Hyatt Smith and it is a touchdown Clawson threw it up in the air and the big tall junior Smith went up and got it and got six yeah great defense really by Bucksport uh, the Defensive back was right there, but Smith, such an athletic receiver, it was the 11th touchdown of the year. He just went up over the top of the defender in, a, in an accurate slow, uh, throw with the wind behind him by Nick Clawson. And uh, 
Foxcroft uses its passing game to take the lead. Came in with over 500 yards of uh, pass receptions. Add to that one. And now Levi Stedman will do the PAT duties. He's pretty darn good on these things. The kick is up, and it is good. He is now 42 of 43 in the PAT department this year. It's the Ponies on top. We've got a break. You're listening to the LTC Championship game on Sports Radio 92.9, the ticket. Back here at Oaks Field in Dover, Foxcroft. Dale Duff, Ernie Clark with you. The LTC Championship night. The kickoff to uh, Logan Stanway of Bucksport. He'll carry it up to what, about the 22-yard line, and that's where the Bucksport Golden Bucks will go to work here for the second time on offense. Keep in mind, there's a stiff breeze, uh, at least a steady 14, 15, and gusting more right in their face in this first quarter. So the handoff will go up the middle and still on the feet. I think that's Tolman. Tolman's off. It's Wardwell on the carry. First one for Wardwell, who was the feature back, but he kind of, at least so far tonight, he's kind of lined up as the fullback. And uh, Tolman's off is kind of the uh, tailback in this. Let's see if uh, if they stay with that. One thing about Joe Sankey, he. He's got a thousand different uh, uh, formations. And he'll use them all uh, <laughs> yeah. when he needs to, no doubt. All right, here we go. He got a gain. I'm a little surprised. He got about four yards on that play, so that's a good carry. He goes again. This is Wardwell. And he'll get two or three more as he gets up over the 25-yard line. They'll spot it at about the 27. So that'll set up a third down call. Turns out he only gets about one, maybe one and a half. And so let's call it four, maybe a long four, maybe five yards to go for the first down here. Yeah, closer to five, and we'll see if uh, Buckport, uh, again, with the wind in their face, goes to the air on this uh, third and five. Three wide receivers all to the left side. He'll throw that way. It is complete. Now did they get forward enough for the first down? Yes, they did. And that is um, Ricard, Keegan Ricard, number five, who made the catch and then got some runs at the yards after the catch, enough to move the chains as they spot at the 34-yard line. That's a good pass and catch. Yeah, and a pass really uh, horizontally out to the sideline. Foxcroft's defense has to respect uh, Ricard's speed, so he has some space there. Caught the ball and just made a one-on-one -on -one move against the cornerback. Picked up seven yards for the first down. Just inside of seven minutes to go here in the opening quarter. Seven to nothing. Foxcroft's got the lead. Now a handoff and the run play goes up the middle. And there's not much running room there. And that's going to be just a gain of about one. That was, uh, I think, it was Wardwell. And, you know, part of the strategy, obviously, is uh, not to take too many chances uh, into the win, but also. Uh, you can run out a few first downs. You can run the clock out, uh, at least in terms of 
going into the wind and then have your chance with the wind at your back. We saw what Klausel was able to do with the wind at his back uh, with the touchdown pass to Smith. So the ball is at their own 35 yard line. They're operating from left to right as we look down and back to throw is Carmichael. It's complete to this side to Tomlinsoff and he'll get up near the 48 yard line. He'll be short of the first down. Good open field tackle there by the box. Prevented him from getting any more yardage. So it's a good pass and catch for short yardage. Yeah, again, the short pass this time to the right to Tomasoff, and looked like he had uh, some room for a decent game, but Cody Labby came up with a heavy hit. Game still went for about six yards, but now it's third and looks to be about four to go. The Labby, number 54, kind of an end position. All right, third down and four, as Ernie says, and here we go. Going to drop back, wants to throw. Now has to roll out of the pocket to the right. Being chased, gets the corner, gets the first down, moves forward, and gets up over the 50-yard line and into Foxcroft territory. The quarterback keep, I don't think he wanted to, but Carmichael kept it and got the first down. Uh, good pressure defensively. Reggie Johnson for Foxcroft, number 66, came in up the middle forced Carmichael to his left, but uh, Carmichael showing his speed, had one guy to beat to get around the corner and then turned it upfield for a good gain into Foxcroft territory. They stopped the clock long enough to reset the chains and they wind down the clock. We're close to five minutes to go here in the opening quarter. And now a timeout called by Foxport as they took a little too long to get that play in. So, timeout on the field, five minutes to play here in the opening quarter. Foxcroft leads Foxport 7 to nothing. You're listening to it live on Sports Radio 92.9, the ticket. by the Golden Bucks over the left side of the line. Carter Thomas off with the carry there and he'll pick up about three yards and get that ball down to the 46 yard line of the Ponies. Seven nothing, Foxcroft leads on a 31 yard touchdown throw and catch Clausen to Smith. And now up the middle they try it again and there is just nothing there right at the line of scrimmage. Wardwell didn't go anywhere. Maybe, well, they're gonna give him a yard. They're gonna move that ball to the 45, so give him one on the carry. Third down. Yeah, not much uh, not much to, to gain up the middle, directly over center by Bucksport's offense. Trying to keep that defense on it, using Wardwell in that uh, way, but now third and five uh, just to be going back to the air. Play fake. Fakes the handoff, wants to throw over the middle, and it's knocked down. And knocking it down was Hyatt Smith. I'd say he was closer to making that pass than the receiver was. But it's incomplete. He's out there playing free safety, uh, just kind of eyeing the quarterback's eyes if he can. Read that play very well and was in position, the best position, to make the catch as it was. Uh, Carmichael's first passing attempt to go downfield into the win falls incomplete. And so, it'll be Ricard, uh, Keegan Ricard, who's taken over the kicking duties, the lefty kicker, and he kicks a short one, keep it out of the wind, and they're gonna let it roll, and it'll go dead at about the 25 yard line. So a short kick, just didn't get any roll. He did the right thing, I think, to keep it, don't, don't kick it as high as you uh, really want to kick it against that wind. 
Yeah, you're really not going to gain anything. If you kick it too high, it's going to come back, and you're going to wind up catching it yourself as the puncher. So you kick it low and hope you get the bounce. That time, not a great bounce, but as it is, Foxcroft starting out with their own 25. 344 left in this opening quarter here. The Dover Foxcroft, the Ponies leading the Bucks. Seven zip. Ponies with the ball again. It's a quarterback keep. It's Clausen. He's got the corner, still on his feet. Drags tacklers along the way. Devin Darwin was uh, had him by the ankles, and uh, Clausen kind of dragged him along for about two extra yards. And that's going to be a pretty healthy game there on first down. That's about seven yards. Eight of seven. Clausen, not the tallest kid, but very strong legs. Got a great low center of gravity. Tough to bring down in the open field. Cut back again and almost found a hole up the middle of the field, but good pursuit by Bucks boy to uh, to limit it to seven yards. And they list him at five eight and two hundred pounds. He's built. Here's a throw over the middle. It's caught by Smith at the thirty-five, and he is brought down at about the twenty-yard line. And if the DB doesn't make that tackle right there, he's gone. Clawson with the wind at his back. Threw a strike over the middle, long distance to Hyatt Smith. And the Ponies are in business again. My math says that's a 50-yard pass play, and it's a great option for Clausen here in the first quarter. You just throw it up as far as you can, and you let Hyatt Smith go track it down, and that's exactly what he did. Now it's going to be Clausen on a quarterback keep. He's got the near corner, turns it up, still on his feet, gets in for the score. Touchdown. He banged into two defenders. Those defenders ended up out of bounds, and he just walked in for the last two yards. Take that. Well, there's your Marine strength right there. Uh, speed to get to the corner. Two Bucksport defenders waiting for him. He knocked them both down with one blow, and popped into the end zone. I didn't know, but he might have stepped out of bounds at about the five, but official right there to see that he didn't. And uh, I think it's going Foxcroft's way here with the wind at their back in the first quarter. 2-12 remaining in the corner. Levi Stedman will do the kicking duties here again. And try to make it a 14 to nothing score. And the hold, and now the kick, and it is good. And he does make it 14 to nothing. So as advertised here on the quarterback thing, so far it is Clawson. And that final run, that touchdown run, that was eight, went for 18 yards. Drive with three plays, 75 yards. The big pass play to Smith, and then the uh, tough run. Around left end by Nick Clausen and the Ponies have a two touchdown lead. Go, to, go back to the earlier meeting they had this season. Uh, Foxcroft uh, won comfortably in that game, and Bucksport never really stopped the Foxcroft offense. Uh, they haven't yet tonight either. The difference being tonight, though, that uh, we'll see what happens when the wind changes around in the second quarter, and Foxcroft is having to go into the wind. Uh, right now, they're able to throw uh, downfield and let the uh, receivers chase the ball. Chase Carmichael and Bucksport will have the chance to do the same thing in the second quarter. Well, in talking to the two coaches, Danny White and uh, Joel Sankey, I asked both of them during the week, I said, well, with the weather and the wind that's going to be there, probably the the biggest decision and the biggest play is who's going to win the coin toss and what are they going to do? <laughs> and uh, Fox Rock won it, and they're out to a 14 zip lead. All right, it's Stanley on the return on the kick. He'll get up over the 20-yard line and get put down at about the 22-yard line. So you're more positive than I am. I was joking with some of the people here at the press box at the Fox Rock set up some giant fans here uh, yesterday for practice to uh, <laughs> pretend to throwing uh, with and against the wind, and uh, or, and or just went out and practiced this afternoon when it was uh, <laughs> blowing this hard or even harder. It's, uh, I, I think, uh, more than anything, more than the rain, it's the wind that coaches just do not like. And uh, unfortunately, we're into November, and you're going to have some wind. All right, pitch play. Tallman's off, will get it. Try to get the corner, and he can't get there. He brought down at about the line of scrimmage. He ran about halfway across the field to this side, to the near side. But he may actually 
I think they're going yeah, yeah. yeah. to give him one, actually, oh. just based on the chains at the other side of the field. But still, uh, Fox Club, with enough quickness that they can pursue complete uh, running backs like Tomasov, stretch out the play and limit the gain, uh, unlike uh, was the case last week in the semifinals against Madden Huckook when Tomasov had a big game. Inside of two minutes to go, opening quarter, 14 to nothing, Foxcroft leading Bucksport. Here's Chase Carmichael, uh oh, reverse play. The ball gets fumbled. Tomasoff's in trouble in the backfield and goes down at about the 20 yard line. It was one of those plays where Carmichael kind of flipped the ball on a kind of an end around play. And I don't know if the wind got it or just a bad little uh, toss. But uh, Tomasov had to go way back and get it. I'll tell you, he did a good job to uh, limit that to a four-yard gain as he picked up the ball and gained about six of those yards back from where he picked it up before he was tackled. And uh, that leaves Bucksport with third and 13. We've got a player down now. Looks like one of the Golden Bucks. The training staff is out there to kind of check him out. It does give us a chance to remind you, we've got a big football weekend here on 92.9 The Ticket. Tomorrow afternoon, in fact, at high noon, um, Hassan will play Mount Ida at the John Winkin Complex. We have live coverage. Hassan will try to wrap up uh, sole possession of the conference title. They can do that with a win. They already know they've got the automatic qualifier for the NCAA playoffs. And then, for many people, it might be your last chance. You don't know if they're going to be able to host a playoff game might be your last chance to see John Smith in person. You may see what a uh, guy that turns out to be the uh, all-time rusher in New England. Uh, that's tomorrow. And then, of course, the Patriots. They play Sunday night football out in Denver. We have live coverage of that for you on Sunday. All right. Player is up. Gets it under his own power. The play continues. And a run out on the right side. And Carmichael tries to pass the ball, but it's incomplete. That was a great defensive play by uh, R.J. Nelson of Foxcroft, number 35. Uh, looked like Carmichael was going to be able to drop that ball into Ricard, but at the last minute, uh, Foxcroft 35, R.J. Nelson was able to uh, jump up and uh, get a hand on it, and now Bucksport's going to have to punt again for the th uh, third time with the wind in their face. So that was important for Foxcroft to stop that drive before the first quarter ended. And they blocked the punt. They blocked Ricard's punt. It's picked up by the Ponies. And in for the score is number 54, Cody Labby. And the big fella rumbles and bumbles into the touchdown. How about that to the Ponies? Yeah, and there was R.J. Nelson again. Two plays in a row. First, he tips a pass on third down to force the punt. Then he comes up the middle and blocks the punt. Cody Labby picks up the ball at about the 15-yard line, runs it in, and uh, it's all Foxcroft here at this point. 20 to nothing. So Labby picks it up and runs in for the six points. And again, they'll try a PAT. This is a wonderful start for the Ponies and the Golden Bucks are cursing the wind, saying, why do we have to go against this in the first well, quarter? Huh? They just hope uh, yeah. it all comes out equal here in the second period because uh, it's been all Foxcroft uh, really doing offense, defense, special teams, everything at will here through the first 11 minutes of play. All right. Here's Stedman on the PAT try, the hold, the kick is up. Uh-oh, hits the post, hits the left post, and falls forward, and the PAT is no good. So the score will stay 20 to nothing here as we play with just a minute to go in this opening quarter. Keep in mind, uh, the teams will reverse field positions and Bucksport will have the wind in the second quarter. And uh, sometimes, sometimes you might decide you want to try to get the wind in the fourth quarter and maybe sometimes you feel like uh, you can't wait that long. Well, I think you've got to have it before that. Yeah, I mean, you think, you know, think Bucksport's confidence, they're going to be able to move the ball through the air. Once the second quarter comes around, it's just a question of getting there at this point. And, uh, Right now, they're almost forced into running the ball a couple of times once they get the kickoff. 
to ensure they don't have to punt again before the, uh, the first quarter ends. You know what? If, if you don't gain the yardage, if you're a Danny White, do you take some timeouts right? and make them punt late in the quarter if you can get that done? Yeah, you might. You might, particularly what happens on first and second down, or at least first down. All right. Thomas off with the feel of the kick return. He'll get up to the 25 and then is spun down there on a tackle. And so the clock reads uh, 58 seconds to play in this opening quarter. Again, the Bucks go against the wind. They got into pony territory on one possession here so far in the uh, in the quarter. Uh, but the the stall, uh, the drive stall, and they had to uh, had to punt it away. All right, Chase Carmichael leads them to the line of scrimmage. He'll hand off and try to pick his way up over the middle. There just isn't much running room. He cut to the right. It was Wardle, and uh, he cut to the right side. All of a sudden, there were all kinds of ponies there to take him down. It's about a gain of two as he'll get up to the 29 yard line. And it looks like here the ponies will have to run one more play if they keep it on the ground. Guys. Cody Labby, the left defensive end, uh, in on the action again on that play. Had a big first quarter for Foxborough. Second down and eight here for the Bucks. Handoff, no nope, fake handoff. It's going to be Carmichael. Wants to roll out, can't get there. Flags come flying. He goes down at about the line of scrimmage. But the clock stops with 14 seconds to go. And let's see, it was in the backfield. And it is a hold against the Golden Bucks. That's what usually happens when that official in that position of the field usually gets a hold against the offense. Uh, well, while the flag is at the 25, you can see where the penalty is going to be marked off from. And it's a swat foul, so they'll mark it off from there. And that's a 10 yard penalty. And that's going to back that ball all the way to the 15 yard line. So, and it also stops the clock. The clock does not start here until now. And uh, they would be well advised not to snap this ball, right? Yeah, exactly. They don't need to, but they do. And they're going to throw. And it's to the outside. Is it complete? Yes, it is. Far side, that's uh, number five, Keegan Ricard on the catch. Short game. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter of play. So they will swap sides, and Bucksport will get the ball with the wind at the back. And let's see what happens when we come back. One quarter in the books. It's Foxcroft 20. Bucksport nothing in the LTC title game on Sports Radio 92.9, the ticket. Back here, Oaks Field in Dover, Foxcroft. The second quarter begins with a pass play, and it's a good one. It is Carmichael to Ricard over the middle, and they move the ball up to their 42-yard line and get a first down on the first play of the second quarter. 20 to nothing here. Foxcroft is leading the Golden Bucks. But for the first time tonight, 
clock. The Bucks have the wind at the back, and Carmichael is throwing, and it's going to go incomplete. Intended for Tomasov, who has great hands. But it went in and out of the hands that time, incomplete. Joe Sankey was telling me, you know, in this year of a lot of injuries and stuff, uh, he picked up, I don't know whether it was, he didn't know whether it was a shot class or something, a couple, three weeks ago, picked up a hot piece of metal <laughs> and uh, kind of <laughs> stung some fingers. Oh, boy, you that's know? all you need. And for one week, he said he was, every pra in practice, he was catching everything with one hand. Oh, <laughs> it's good if you can do it, yeah. but uh, you'd like not to put yourself in that position. All right, second down and 10 after the incomplete pass. Carmichael looks downfield. Now he scrambles out of the pocket, still on the lookout. Now he's going to catch the corner. He's going to run the ball, and he's going to go out of bounds on that far side. We'll see where he went out of bounds over on that Bucksport side of the field. But it's going to be, I think, a pretty good game. A gain of about six. So two things on that play. A, good defensive coverage in the secondary by Foxcroft. But B, now you see the confidence of Chase Carmichael with the wind at his back really aggressively looking to pass the ball downfield, much like Nick Clausen did to Foxcroft in the first quarter. All right, so let's call it now third down and about four. Flags come flying on the near side. Somebody's lined up in the neutral zone here, I think. And the question is, which side? Your first down if it's against Foxcroft. No indication yet. No, it's on the offense. Maybe just a little bit of movement there. And so, instead of uh, third down and four, long four, maybe a short five, now it's going to be third down and about nine. That third, changes everything. Yeah, third penalty of the game against uh, Bucks. But Foxcroft yet to commit a penalty. And those penalties hurt, particularly in situations like this, suddenly uh, kind of remove all doubt. You had the pass run option on third and four, but now uh, Carmichael will be looking to find one of the receivers downfield. And now they run a play, and he throws downfield, and double coverage almost picked off. And it was. Uh, uh, Clawson, who was down there helping on the double coverage, and he almost picked off the other quarterback there. It falls incomplete, and it's fourth down here for the Golden Bucks. Foxcroft's defense has learned from what its offense was able to do in the first quarter, and that is make sure no receiver gets behind the last guy on defense, in that case, Nick Clawson. So, Ricard will have to punt it away. He's standing at about his own 32. And he'll boom this one pretty high, and it gets past Smith. He's just going to let it go, and they're going to keep it out of the end zone or not. No, it's in the end zone for a touchback. So that's a huge break for the ponies. Bucksport tried gallantly to get down there and stop that ball from going into the end zone, but it just crept over the goal line and in and the Ponies will get it at the 20. Yeah, great hustle by Bucksport, came up just an inch or two short, and now the Ponies, instead of having the ball at their own one, have it at the 20, but now they are going into the wind here with 11.06 left in the first half. Got some other scores to report to you. We'll see at the end of this play here, we'll send it back to Sports Control. Mark Follett will give us an update on uh, other football playoff games and uh, the start of the college basketball season tonight. Here is a handoff. Uh, no, it's going to be kept by Clawson. He probably wishes he handed it off. If he got took down in the backfield, that's going to be a loss of a couple of yards as they swarm on the Ponies quarterback. All right, let's go back to sports control. Mark Follette with an update. Thank you, and we'll continue to get updates uh, all night long from uh, sports control there. The uh, play, second down play, was a handoff to Niles, and uh, he gained, uh, what, six yards or so? Yeah, six yards, third down and six now for the Ponies. Niles, 
rushed for over 500 yards in regular season play. And now Clausen fakes the handoff to him, keeps it, got running room, got a first down, and more. He's at the 50, he's at the 40, he's at the 30, and he's finally dragged down from behind at the 10-yard line. Carter Tomasoff caught him from behind at the 10. He was that close to breaking it all the way. 65 yards on the game. Fake the inside handoff to Niles. Big hole on the right side of the line of scrimmage. Got outside and got to the uh, corner, and uh, it was only Carter Tomasoff who could track him down from behind. But uh, 12, 38, and 26 is uh, 64 <laughs> yards on the game. Wow, that's pretty good math. That's uh, pretty quick. Just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man in motion and they will hand it off to Richard. And he didn't get anywhere. A little uh, sweet play there, a little handoff to the wide receiver, Richard, but he's uh, brought down right about the line of scrimmage. May have lost a half a yard. Let's move it back to the 13 yard line here. So the Ponies can pick up a first down and not score here. They're gonna get right around the two yard line. Just over nine minutes to go till halftime here. It is 20 to nothing. Foxcroft scoring three touchdowns in the first quarter. And made two out of the three PATs. Uh-oh, high snap again. All the way back to the 35. Clausen's got a fall on it, and he does. That's another huge loss on a high, high snap. And I'll tell you what. I think that thing got caught up in the wind a little bit too. Well, that's the way the wind is blowing. And once it got airborne, it uh, it kept going. That's a big loss uh, back to the 36, minus 23 on the play. Klausen would be well over 100 yards <laughs> rushing, but for two of those that have cost him uh, nearly 40 yards. So those uh, that that yardage counts against him. It has to. Wow. You can't you can't play it. You can't count it on the center. I don't think. Wow. That's uh, that's tough stat. That's a tough man. No, tough. I know. <laughs> I know that is the right uh, the right thing, but I never thought of it that way. Holy cow! All right, so they move it back to the 37 yard line here, and now timeout. And this one is, I think, taken by Foxcroft. So just over eight minutes to go in the second quarter. It's the ponies ahead, 20 to nothing. Let's take a break here from Oaksfield in Dover Foxcroft. This is Sports Radio 92.9 ticket. Yeah, he's lost 13 and lost 37 yards on those two carries. <laughs> now he's got to come up with a, what, third and 35 play into the win. Wow. Hopefully he doesn't wind up with like uh, 999 career yards. Did you see where uh, the Hartley, the EL quarterback, he finished with throwing 999 yards? Really? really? Well. Back here, it is Foxcroft ball. They've got some work to do here on third down after the bad snap. They're all the way back here to the 37-yard line of Bucksport. In order for them to get to a first down, they've got to get all the way down to about the two. <laughs> what do you so, What do you got on third and 35 into the wind up? I don't know. Let's see here. Clausen going to roll to the right. He'll throw to the right. It is complete. It's to Richard, and he almost gets out of a tackle. He gets down inside the 20-yard line. Now, that does set up a reasonable whatever kick, or you're probably going to go for it, right? I uh, think, I think you would down. go for it. Uh, field goal is unlikely into this strong a wind uh, from the 18. That's 19 yards of the 35, so they could have it back. And with receivers like uh, uh, Richard and Hyatt Smith, pretty sure-handed guys, both of them, Give yourself an opportunity here, although you would think if you're going to pass to the end zone, uh, pass to the, try to get the first down, you're probably going to be going toward the end zone. You know, 
what? Yeah, they're they're going to try that kick. Levi Stedman, who uh, was part of the soccer team, has done a great job kicking. He's two for two in the field goal department. They're going to spot it at the 25. So this is a 35-yard kick. And I think somebody got a piece of it. And it's going to end up short of the goal line. It is picked up by Ricard. And he's going to run it back. Uh, near to the 20 yard line. I don't think that ball was tipped. Oh, you don't think it was I tipped? I think that's just the wind. Okay. That's how I. And, and you, you see him down at the other end kicking extra points that would be good from 40 yeah. and then going the other way now into the wind. That ball just went sideways about mm. five yards off its feet. Yeah. Well, that'll be the last time I think into the wind anybody going to try to kick that because yeah. if he can't do that, I mean, uh, it, it, it had to look like it was. Tip. That, that gives you an idea of how strong the wind is when you're either throwing or kicking into it. Right? Oh, exactly. And, and that play uh, typifies it more than any play we've seen so far because they've been smart enough to, to punt the ball low and, and keep it low. All right. Chase Carmichael and company go to work. He throws and he overthrows. It's picked off by Clawson at the 40 yard line. He's going to return it down inside the 15 yard line. Carmichael overshot his receiver, and in center field was the safety, Clawson. Now there is a flag down at about the 25-yard line. We'll see what that's about, but I think it's going to be pony ball here in pretty good field position. Yeah, as you mentioned, Clawson just playing center field. Caught that ball at the 48-yard line as uh, Carmichael overthrew his receiver with the wind at his back. Uh, flag on the end of the play the flag dropped right where the tackle was made after the return so let's see what Sean Kimball's got up his sleeve for this call Sean's wearing those uh, looks like those uh, white earmuffs or something right got to pull down the uh, he came prepared yeah all right so it's a dead ball on sportsman like that's against Foxcroft I'm not sure what that was but it was after the play and so they're going to back that ball up to the 29-yard line. But they get the interception. Clawson's had a heck of a game, has he not? He really has. He's being put in a position defensively where he can succeed, though, just playing that center field with a wind uh, uh, at uh, Carmichael's back because he knows if the ball was overthrown, he can kind of read the receivers to know where to go, and that time had a real easy interception. Got him down now for two interceptions on the year. All right, so here come the ponies, leading 20 to nothing. And they've got uh, six minutes, 40 seconds to work with here on the second quarter clock. Leading here 20 to nothing with the ball again. And now whistles and a flag down on the far side. I think somebody's lined up in the neutral zone or movement there or something. As the, comes in from the line judge on that far side. And it looks like the ponies, they're already backing the huddle up. So I would say it's against them. Yeah, that's probably, as you mentioned, lined up in the neutral zone. Well, on the other flag. Oh, never mind. Okay. They say they're picking up the flag. There is no penalty. And so we will play on. So uh, that was on the first down play. It was whistled dead before the snap. So it's still first down here. 29-yard line of Bucksport after the interception and run by Nick Clawson. Now he lines up in shotgun formation. Niles lined up to his left, and they hand off to Ricard. A flag comes out on the far side. Now two, three flags come down, and uh, Richard is taken out of bounds on the far side with very little gain, gain there. But there's lots of laundry down on the field, and we got a lot to figure out here. I almost threw my handkerchief, Dale. <laughs> Gee, I, I was keeping an eye on Richard, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw yellow flags flying from every direction. He, he was wondering what he did wrong. Somebody was throwing stuff at him. Yeah. But it's going to be against Foxcroft. Uh, Got to be cold or something like that, I, I yeah. think. Okay, all of that is a legal shift. So probably two guys were moving at once or something. So was it necessary for everybody to throw <laughs> their flag? I guess. <laughs> Wasn't one or two enough? Just trying to prove they were all on the same page. They all that's have one. Yeah, that's teamwork. <laughs> so that'll mean uh, a five-yard penalty. 
And uh, the ponies, they got their huddle going on back near midfield. <laughs> They're what, 20, yeah, 20 yards back from the line of scrimmage. Now they're 15 yards. They back the ball up to the uh, about yeah. the 35. Actually, well, it turned out to be a six-yard penalty on the ponies uh, at the 35, but, uh, but it is first and 15. Yeah, they have, uh, in essence, have yet to run a play here yet. Now it's first down and 15. Shotgun formation again here for the ponies, and it's Clawson. He's going to keep going to go over the right side. Another flag comes down. He's taken down at the line of scrimmage. And let's see what the flag comes. Comes from deep in the uh, defensive back uh, territory. So I wonder if there was some holding or something going on there. I will say the flag uh, travels very well uh, with yeah. the wind at your back, too. Yes, it's, it does. It's some pretty impressive heaves here on the last couple of plays. Uh, they've all gone... So far against the ponies and uh, Sean Kimball talking with Fox Sports captain to see if they want to uh, accept a down that would still leave Foxcroft uh, in a long field position situation or illegal procedure this time against the ponies. And so they'll tack on five more yards and they'll move that ball back to the 39 yard line. Pony's offense is going in reverse here, and they're not even running plays. I think I just got out of my mouth that Foxcroft hadn't committed the penalty, and uh, so it's your fault. Uh, doing it all at once, the old broadcaster jinx, I guess. 620 to play here in the second quarter. 20 to nothing. Pony's lead. Clawson, keeper, wants to run over the left side, gets two or three yards, still on his feet, gets near the 30-yard line and then gets yanked back. He'll mark the forward progress at about the 30-yard line. So that'll be a pickup of about nine. So he gets back almost two of the penalties. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, second 11 now, so he basically got back uh, in exactly all but one yard of the penalty. You can see the leg drive there again by uh, Klaus. What did you say? 5'8", uh, 200? Yeah. And a lot of it's uh, lower body. He was able to, to uh, carry uh, defender or two for an extra four or five yards there uh, to make this a much more manageable manageable situation after the penalties. You say he's going into the Marines, huh? Yeah, I was talking to him the other day, and he mentioned he's graduating in January and uh, heading off to the Marines, had a Marine satchel there with him, so uh, it's, it's further proof. Now we're going to get a timeout taken here by the Foxcroft Ponies. Boy, this has been... This has been an adventure on offense. This, uh, all this started here after the Clawson interception, and they just can't seem to get in rhythm. There's a timeout on the field. We'll grab it as well. 5.18 to play till halftime. 20 to nothing. The Ponies leading the Bucks in the LTC Championship game on Sports Radio 92.9 The Ticket. Oh, really? Dear. Are you serious? Well, yep. Be wearing one of them fancy masks for a couple of weeks there. Jeez. Oh. Wow, what else could go wrong? I'll send it. I'll, uh, I'll send it back to you there at some point just to update Who are they playing? That. Are they playing Charlotte? Charlotte. Yeah. Out of the timeout, the Ponies will run the ball here and they hand off to Niles and he'll dive forward for a couple of three yards. They're going to spot it down at the 27 yard line of Bucksport. And so that sets up third down and about eight. Third down and eight here for the Ponies who lead 20 to nothing. Second quarter action here from Oaks Field in Dover Foxcroft. 
Clawson marks out the signals, high snap, comes away with it, hands off to Niles, gets the near corner, turns it up, still on his feet, moves forward down to about the 19-yard line. And I'll tell you what, that second and third effort is going to make it close on the sticks. It'll be about a yard short of the first down, but fourth and one. Pretty manageable considering where they uh, started out for the ponies. And a good job uh, by Niles, A, speed to get to the corner, and then some toughness at the end. He got spun around, but uh, kept pushing forward, picked up an extra yard or two, and again, just a yard to go here on fourth down to keep the drive alive. And just now, under four minutes to play in the quarter. It's a keeper by Clawson. He's got a first down over the middle and gets all the way down to the 10-yard line. Boy, he took off in a hurry. Uh-oh, he's kind of limping and holding his right hand, Ernie. Yeah, oh, holding his fingers. And he comes over to the sideline, as he always does, to get the play. Clock continues to run here. We're uh, 3.45 and counting. Looks like he's going to be okay to stay in the game. And uh, now he points down to his wrist area. And I don't know. They may have to spend a time out here and see what they're going to do here. They're going to let the clock run down. I can see the coach saying, we're going to let that run down as far as we have to, let the clock run, and then take the time out. Tell you what, he, he jammed either a finger or something with the wrist on his throwing on his right hand. Yeah, I couldn't tell if it was the wrist or maybe the thumb. Well, speaking of injuries, we've got some injuries to report here on the Celtics. Let's go back to Sports Control. Mark Paulette, tell us about what's going on with Kyrie Irving. Celtics. Now, no Kyrie, I'm sure probably for the rest of this night, no Horford, no Tatum, and no Hayward. Of course, no Hayward. Oh, I, would, cow. I would speculate at this point that that's not the first Aaron elbow thrown by Aaron Baines. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, he, he's going to be a Boston favorite, he isn't is. he? He's just he that type that they're going to love him. They're not going to love him for the inadvertent elbow on, a, on Kyrie, but... Um, all right, back here in Dover Foxborough. Let's see here is... Uh, it's going to be Spooner, the backup quarterback, is in the game. Uh, number 14, right? Matthew Spooner. And so he'll come in and be in shotgun formation. And he's going to run the ball just as Clawson does, and he gets taken down. Ooh, what about the... Nine yard line. He got hit hard. Welcome to the game, young man. Woof. I know the uh, Pony coaching staff is high on Spooner. He's a junior, probably the incumbent uh, starter next year, but uh, didn't want to have to put him out there in this position. And again, flag down in the Foxcroft backfield. I think this one. Yeah, I thought so. I, I could see something going on, and the officials were looking right at the golden box there. So that's going to move that half, half the distance to the goal, right? It's going to be still uh, second down. It's not an automatic first down, but the ball was moved from the line of scrimmage halfway to the goal line. So from the 10 to the 5. It was a dead ball foul, so that's going to be second down, not first down, but uh, second in goal for the Ponies. Yeah, they're going to spot the ball just inside the five-yard line. So just inside the five, Clawson out of the game. He's the trainer down there. He's working, helping things out a little bit. He's right there on the sideline still, so we'll see how that plays out as the clock stops here for the moment and I think well, they're checking to make sure on the spot on the ball so it is just inside the five and from shotgun formation Spooner the new quarterback and sends a man in motion right to left high snap he keeps it wants to try to get to the corner can't get there in fact he'll lose four yards as that defense came swarming in 
and made the tackle at about the nine. And so now third down and goal to go for the ponies. Yeah, Woodwell among several blocks to get to that corner as Schooner tried to run wide behind a Jeremy Richard block, but too many defenders out there. Now the ponies third and goal for the nine. And just two and a half minutes to go until halftime. Bucksport has not been able to take advantage of the win in this quarter. And it's a keeper by Clausen who's back in the game. And he'll get tripped up after getting a yard or two. But that'll set up a fourth down call. And so now, what does Coach White and company do after seeing that last field goal try? I think you go for it on fourth goal from the seven. Got the pass and the run option, although Foxcroft has not thrown the ball in this quarter. Don't believe. Stedman's coming in, I think, isn't it? He? He's in the game, yeah. and they are setting up. That's well, cool. the ball is spotted right between the hash marks, so he's got a straight-on kick here. They're going to spot it at the 15, so this will be a 25-yard kick. I don't think they got it off in time. They did not get it off in time. Delay of game is going to back it up five yards. I think they were going to go for it, it appeared, and then said, no, we're going to kick it. And uh, it took a little too much time. And it's going to be five yards longer on the kick. Now Danny White is talking with Nick Clausen. So it looks like uh, it's going to take the field goal attempt out of play. Indeed it is. Yeah, Stedman, the kicker, comes off. Clausen comes on. And they will go for it. So the ball is going to be spotted at the 12-yard line. Uh, yes, 12-yard line. So, fourth down, goal to go here for the Ponies from the 12. They lead it 20 to nothing. All right, here's Clausen, reverse play. It's going to be taken by Rick Richard. He's going to get around the corner, still on his feet, gets down inside the five, but is short of the goal line. He does not get in, and the Bucks defense has held barely. That was huge for the, for the Golden Bucks to keep Foxcroft out of the end zone here. We'll see if they can do anything uh, in the last 91 seconds of the half, but uh, keeping Foxcroft off the board in that situation kept them in the game. And another injury down on the field. This one to one of the Golden Bucks players here. Boy, we've had a lot of players down here and use timeouts. We've had a lot of penalties, and uh, it's taken a while. 7.59, so it's just about an hour in the first half. So yeah. the first quarter went by really quickly. It's really kind of bogged down here uh, over the last four or five minutes. With you mentioned a couple of injuries and, uh, and some penalties there. Foxcroft jumped out to the three touchdown lead here. They had the wind at the back in their, th in their first quarter and uh, took advantage of it. It's a stiff breeze, um, basically going from right to left down the field. And the, pon the ponies, uh, by keeping the ball, by intercepting a pass, they really, Bucksport has not had the ball much with the wind. No, not at all. And certainly not in tremendous field position. Certainly not on the Foxcroft side of the field. Whereas uh, you could see that uh, Clausen has played in these conditions here at Foxcroft before. He hasn't thrown the ball much, but uh, he was able to really finesse those passes downfield and let Hyatt Smith uh, go and get them uh, in the first quarter when Foxcroft had the win at their back. They've been able to do some damage on the ground here in the second quarter, particularly the 64-yard run by uh, Clausen to move them deep into Bucksport territory, but have not been able to capitalize. And uh, as a result, uh, Bucksport hanging in here down 20 to nothing. All right, player gets off the field under his own power, and now on offense go the work of the Bucks, and it's Carmichael with a keeper. He'll get up to the 12-yard line. That'll be a gain of about seven. They're going to go to no huddle as we're down to a minute 14 and counting until halftime. They're trying to work out something with the wind at the back. A little quick out pass to the right side. It's complete to Tomasoff, but there's not much there. Enough to move the chains, though. And they'll stop the clock long enough to move those chains. It's at 106. I think they're out of timeouts, too. They may very well be. They spent a couple of timeouts to try to stop the momentum there that the ponies were on early in the game. 
Now they reset the clock, and here we go. It's a fresh set of downs. Carmichael throws. That one is complete to the right side. And it goes to Tyson Gray, who was injured for much of the year, but he makes that catch. And they move the chains again. He gets out of bounds, and it stops the clock at 57 seconds. That's what you'll see Carmichael and the Golden Bucks try to do is use that sideline to their advantage. That time, pass on the right side. Tyson Gray was able to pick up what he could before going out of bounds. They get the ball now up to the 25 yard line. They got a long way to go here and not much time. Now a bad snap, the ball is loose, still loose. And I think Fox Cross got it. They say they have it. The official is waving it dead for the moment. No signal from the official. And now there's a signal and it belongs to the ponies. Well, what else can go wrong for the Golden Bucks in this first half? Yeah, one more chance for Foxcroft. Another turnover, second of the second quarter by the Golden Bucks on that bad snap. And uh, didn't see who made the recovery, but several ponies there. And with 51 and a half seconds left, they are going to have another chance to punch one in into the wind here before intermission. Wow, this has been... Uh, Three. Real uh, waste of having the wind at your back for one of the two quarters that you get it. All right, Clawson rolls to the right, throws to the right, well over the head, incomplete, intended for Hyatt Smith. That was a zig when he should have zagged down there as uh, uh, Hyatt Smith, Hunter's brother, uh, flared out to the right and uh, Clawson thought he was going to the end zone, so he threw it over through. Coming up at halftime, we'll get you uh, an update on everything happening. Mark Follett will give it to us back at Sports Control. Also, we'll have a chat with John Smith, who is putting up some records that I don't think anybody in Maine on the college scene is going to break for a long, long time. He's over 6,000 career yards plays for the final time at home tomorrow afternoon. All right, out of the play, it's a throw to the end zone, knocked down and incomplete. It was intended. Tyson Gray, they say, knocked it down. Was that uh, Smith over there? I think it was Richard. Richard three. Yeah. He's a little smaller than Smith. Uh, good cover, double teams uh, was uh, Richard as he reached the goal line there, and it was Tyson Gray of the two defenders that went up and uh, Nearly intercepted the play. Does stop the clock at 39 seconds. I'm not sure we're ever going to get that. <laughs> what do you think? Well, <laughs> we know that there's not many timeouts left for either team, so that's the. I just want to say it like it is. I want to be able to close this window for halftime. <laughs> yeah, I want you to too. But I'm getting it from both sides. So I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Wants to throw, flag comes out. It's a keeper by Clawson. He'll get to the three yards, but the clock will stop. He'll get down near the 20 yard line here, but let's see what the flag is about. Clock stops at 33 seconds. It's going to be fourth down if the penalty is declined. Fourth and looks to be about seven. Yeah, they'll, take, they'll take the penalty. Illegal procedure there, so that's a five-yard penalty. And so that'll back it up to the 25-yard line. And they'll replay third down. You know, speaking of the cold weather and all, though, uh, Joel Sankey, the, the head coach for Bucksport, he's, a, he's a just a... He just loves golf. He was out playing. Was he out playing today? He, yeah, whatever that cold day was the other day. I don't know if it was Wednesday or Thursday in the morning. He was out playing. I'm playing today. I only play the holes with the winds at my back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Now they're going to actually move the ball back to the 29, 28 yard line. All right. Third down. Let's call it third down and about 15. And here we go. Shotgun formation here for Clausen. And he'll roll to the right. Wants to throw, now looks back to the middle and throws it, and it is picked off. That's Ricard picking that one off in front of Richard. So Ricard picks it off right in front of Richard, and the Golden Bucks get the ball back 
with 23 seconds to go. I actually thought Clawson had something going with uh, Hyatt Smith down the right sideline. Smith cut inside the defender and seemed to have a, an alley to the end zone, but uh, Clawson saw, uh, excuse me, Richard over the middle and uh, Ricard was there for the turnover that will uh, likely mark the end of this first half, he says. Yeah, don't be so quick on that. Uncertainly. <laughs> All right, Chase Carmichael and company. They're going to get the ball at um, the eight-yard line. Carmichael wants to throw, and he overshoots everybody. One man down there was Carter. Was it Stanley out there for the pass? But he was into double coverage, and it goes incomplete and stops the clock at 17 seconds. So he's got time for, well, a couple of plays, maybe. Sure, and, and, and it's worth it to gamble deep because you mm -hmm. see what difficulty uh, Foxcroft has had uh, you know, finishing off drives down on this end of the field, even though it seems like the ball's been down here for the last half hour. And you got three wide outs to the left side, one to the right side. He's in his own end zone, throws over the middle. It is complete at the 20-yard line. And down goes Ricard at that 20-yard line. And that'll be enough for the first down. I think there's a flag, too, right? Yeah, there is. Stopping the clock at nine seconds as we limp to halftime here. And let's see. They're going to spot the ball just over the 20-yard line. And let's see what the penalty is about. A lot of penalties here in this first half. Yeah, pretty clean first quarter. Bucksport with two penalties in the first quarter, but uh, can't count high enough to add up how many we've had here in the second. Both teams would like, a, like to get to halftime, just kind of reset Looks like here. They're asking Foxcroft, so something tells me it's against Bucksport. They're asking Foxcroft what they want to do. Crack back, crack back block against Bucksport. And so they're going to, instead of having the ball at the 20, they're going to mark that back. It's a 10 yarder, so they're going to mark it back at the 10. So they got 90 yards to go in nine seconds. So let's see, this one could be the last play. All right, Carmichael, shotgun formation, standing at his own five-yard line, and he's just going to hand off. And they're going to go nowhere, and that's going to bring the first half to the end. So the Ponies decide, let's just get to halftime here and regroup. It's a 20 to nothing score. Ponies in the lead and in command, frankly, at this stage of the game. Yeah, really, yeah. I mean, they've shown they can move the ball, really, in both directions uh, in the first half. Uh, certainly paid off in the first quarter with a uh, 20 to nothing lead, with the two touchdowns offensively, and then the block punt return for the third score. Uh, and then Foscroft moved the ball uh, in the second half on the ground. Clawson, in particular, were able to get down deep into Bucksport territory just couldn't cash in, and, and Bucksport, even with the wind at their back, really had uh, not much luck at all trying to move the ball from their own end of the field to get it out in a position where they could really do some, or attempt to do some damage. Uh, not much in the way of offense for the Golden Bucks uh, in either direction here, and uh, as a result, uh, the Ponies with a three touchdown lead going into the break. And when we come back for the third quarter, they'll swap ends again, and uh, it'll be the Ponies that will have the wind at their back in that uh, third quarter of play. So let's take a break. Let's catch our breath, maybe warm up a little bit here in the press box area. And we thank you for joining us here on LTC Championship Night. The Ponies leading the Golden Bucks 20 to nothing. We'll take this time out and get you a sports update. Just a couple of moments. This is Sports Radio 92.9, the ticket. Yeah, and then when I come back, I'll cue up the John Smith thing. 
And then do I take another break after that? Okay, okay, good, thanks.
Crossing again on the quarterback keeper, gets back in the line of scrimmage. So still gaining the play, third down at 12.
makes a third down and 23 back at the 36 yard line. Passing complete, he can require the intended target. Deal with Niles and Hyatt Smith out in coverage. Brings up third down and one for Buckthorpe. Incomplete. And Thomas out the intended target, knocked down by Matt Spooner, brings up a third down for Buck Spooner. It's worth about two.
Reception. Steps out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. Ball at the 8 yard line, second down and 2 for Bucksport. Or do you go for the touchdown? They've been going for the touchdown here with uh, several passes here in a row. All right, fourth down call. Carmichael wants to keep it. He does, and he's tripped up, and he's going to be short of the first down. Coming in was Niles in his linebacker spot and kind of tripped him up short of the first down marker, and the Bucks go all the way down the field but are now going to have to give the ball up on downs. Well, the question that was answered was uh, they went for the first down as uh, – no attempt to pass there by the Golden Bucks as Carmichael took it, took a couple of steps to his right and then uh, looked to go forward, but had his legs taken out, as you mentioned, by McCaleb Niles, who shot across the line and a uh, huge defensive stop for the Ponies there, keep, keeping the momentum. They get the ball back with a long field to go, but uh, keep Bucksport out of the end zone yet again. And uh, they get a couple of first downs here. And Bucksport may not see the ball again here in the third quarter with the wind at the back. Here's Clausen with a keeper on first down. He's got some good first down yardage up near the 15-yard line. He'll be shy of the marker, but will pick up about six on first down. Again, that's uh, that's just what the ponies want to do here is turn out first downs and six-yard gains on first down help make that happen. By the way, just looking at the flags that are on top of the goalposts, and I, I would, I would almost say the wind has died down just a little bit. Yeah, at times it, it's it's the gusts I think that cause a lot of the problems. Here's a keeper again by Clausen, and he'll get a first down up over the left side of the line. He broke it to the outside and got up over the 25-yard line. Plenty enough for a first down. They will move those chains and the ponies will keep possession. Leading here 20 to nothing. And we're deep in the third quarter. 114 rushing yards unofficially for Nick Clausen. And that's with two bad snaps. That's with that yeah, that's with minus 24 and minus 13. <laughs> minus three, so he's up around 150. Uh, those plays not held against him. All right, hands off this time. It's Niles up the middle. He'll go for two. 
maybe three, no, let's call it two yards as they spot the ball down at about their own 28 yard line. They got 20 points up on the board now. They're trying to play a little keep away football. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, their ideal situation other than scoring would be to uh, take three downs and get another first down and repeat over and over again. Three and a half minutes to go and counting here in the third quarter. High snap. Clausen picks it up. Now tries to run forward and he's going to get caught behind the line of scrimmage. So there's uh, the third time that has happened that he'll get negative yardage. Saved himself about 10 by reaching up and <laughs> snatching that ball out of the air before it got behind him, but uh, he's going to go for a loss. By the way, how'd you like to be the snapper? Each time. You're just not used to it again, and you're you know you're, you're used to snapping it to your uh, quarterback, but you're not used to that additional 15 miles an hour of help. The other thing I would say too, I think they're I think they're here now, but the band was here like earlier too. I right? I'd like to put your lips up to a trumpet tonight. Boy, I, I didn't I didn't notice that they that they were here to be honest with you. I don't blame them for leaving. <laughs> All right, here's Clawson. Oh boy, he got running room up on that far side. And I think he's going to be a little short of the first half, but he'll be close as he just exploded once he got to that far corner. Gets up limping a little bit, and he's shy by about two yards. And what are they going to do? Punt it away. It's fourth down. And he did go out of bounds, so it stops the clock at 2:34. And Clawson. Staying in, looks like. You, you, you think of it if they are going for it as a gamble, but really you're only talking about gambling maybe 20 yards because the puck is just not going to go that far. So from their 35 yard line, now what do we have? Uh, we got Danny White wanting to Talk have a second like thought about yeah. what exactly we want to do here on fourth and short. Maybe he was just hoping to maybe get to draw them offside or something, but he'll take the time out and we will too. 2.33 left in the third quarter. 20 to nothing. Bucksport, uh, Foxcroft leading Bucksport here in the LTC championship game. Oh my God, is that right? Yeah, they're down 15 to Charlotte. 54-39. Well, he's in the Concussion protocol. He'll, he's going to be. He out may be out for meters. a while. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I'll get to you there, Mark. Fourth down out of the timeout, and Coach Danny White and company have decided they will punt it away. And it's uh, Smith, their punter, and he's standing at about his own 22-yard line. He'll punt into the wind, low snap, picks it up, boots it away. Oh, look at that wind take a hold of it. And it'll roll dead at about the 46-yard line. So that's about all you can do against the wind. It's a 19-yard punt. And, uh, probably worth it. You know, you want to do everything you can if you're Foxcroft not to give uh, Bucksport any signs of hope or at least any uh, opportunity with a real short field as it is. They've got uh, 54 yards to go to break onto the score. So they've got uh, two minutes and 26 seconds of wind behind the back time in this third quarter, and then they'll have to go against the wind in the fourth. All right, a little swing pass to this side of the field. It's to Tomlin's up, and he kind of loses his footing. Boy, did he go down hard. You know what? He's not getting up. He's not getting up either. He kind of slipped, right, on his own. Yeah, he's up now, but he's yeah. limping. On the reception. Short gain on the play, uh, three yards on that first down. And that's, uh, again, Foxcroft uh, with the quickness seemingly to match Bucksport's receivers, and they prevented them from uh, really getting many long gains except for an occasional play where they're uh, open and, and uncovered until uh, Foxcroft can catch them with the suit. But uh, 
a lot of short gains on the passing uh, attack for the Golden Bucks so far. By the way, as you look down on the field here, is there is there a better grass field for November 10th in the state than this one? Uh, be, be hard pressed. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like they've never played on. All right, second down, let's call it second down and seven. Carmichael wants to throw right side, and it's incomplete. And we're going to get a flag down. I think the defender kind of undercut the receiver to make sure he couldn't go any further while the ball was still in the air. Yeah, ball still in the air. I'm not sure that there's such a thing as an uncatchable ball rule in the uh, high school ranks like there is in the pros. So uh, that ball was not going to be caught. It was overthrown. but. Uh, it's going to go for 15 yards against the Ponies. Pass interference, so that'll be free yardage here for the Golden Bucks. A minute 52 of time left while they do that. Let's go back to sports control here. Let's get an update on other happenings here on a Friday night busy sports world. Mark Follett at sports control. Mark. trailing 20 to zip and an end around play Thomas off has it he's got some running room cuts to the outside now he's running out of real estate and is taken out of bounds he'll get about five or six yards he'll run about 55 <laughs> but again that's the pursuit <laughs> of the Foscroft secondary in particular they've got the speed to match up with uh, Bucksport speed guy that's a play that could have gone a long way but great pursuit by Foscroft's defense as you mentioned about a five yard gain there is just a, a five yard gain now player down a on that player far side I think it's a, uh, a Bucksport player it's on the Bucksport side I'm not sure who it is it's a long player gonna get a timeout uh, for this injury one 37 to play. I think we owe you a, another timeout here in the third quarter. So let's go ahead and take it. 20 to nothing here. Foxcroft in the lead for the LTC championship. This is Sports Radio 92.9, the ticket. Is it Carmichael? Is it Carmichael? I can't tell. No. No, he's out there. Yeah, I see him. for Foxcroft. Yeah, Carmichael tried to go to the uh, right flat one time too often there, and uh, Nelson uh, stepped in front of the patent and raced down the left sideline about 70 yards for the touchdown. Second big play of the game by Nelson, who had blocked a punt earlier in the first half that was returned for a touchdown by Cody Labby. Now he takes one in all his own, 70 yards down the left sideline, and uh, a promising Bucksport possession winds up in a Foxcroft touchdown. And the extra point is up against the wind and curls inside that left upright. It was close. 
but it goes through, and that makes it a 27 to nothing score. This all happens with 122 to go in the third quarter. That's the first points on the board since the three touchdowns scored by the Ponies in that third quarter. So, uh, how about this for uh, plays? A block punt by Lab resulted in he picked or he did Nelson block Nelson with a block punt. Yeah. Labby with a recovery, for, recovery a touchdown. for a touchdown. And now a pick six how by Nelson. Yeah. I mean that's well you've got 27 points on the board and two of the touchdowns, two of the four touchdowns have been scored by special teams of defense. So it's a thoroughness of uh, performance uh, so far by Foxcroft. They're scoring in every way and holding Bucksport uh, without any sort of offense. And the Ponies lead it 27 to nothing. The Bucks are going to lose the wind at their back in a minute and 22 seconds. And look at that flag right down uh, by the by the cooler there as we talk about the uh, the wind abating briefly, certainly not permanently tonight. I would dare say, looking at that flag, but I think that's the most wind that we've had all night. That uh, if it was quiet, it was only momentarily. All right, here's the kickoff. Tomasoff will carry, and he'll get up over the 40-yard line. Good return. And it'll go up to about the 43-yard line. And again, good field position for the Golden Box. But I gotta tell you, Bucksport, that last one was a back break. That's a killer because they, you know, they had a chance to go in for a touchdown to make it 20 to 7. Uh, but uh, now it's 27 nothing, and not only is it 27 to nothing, 116, Bucksport will be faced with uh, going into the wind in the fourth quarter, and they had zero success doing that in the first period. All right, let's see what happens here in the final 60. 76 seconds left here of the third quarter. And it is Carmichael dropping back to throw over the middle, incomplete, tipped. And it stays incomplete. As, uh, it might have been both receivers in that general area. I think they might have both got a piece of it. Yeah, they were kind of <laughs> defending each other. There were a lot of people congested yeah. in the middle of the field. There were two Bucksport receivers and two or three Foxcroft uh, linebackers and defensive backs. Too much traffic to, to expect a completion. So, second down and 10 from their own 42 yard line. And an eye set in the backfield up under center. This time is Carmichael. Fakes the handoff, wants to throw, looks to the left, throws to the left, too high. Stanley went up in the air. That's one of those where I think that actually the wind, even though it was at the back, it did affect that throw. Yeah, and I think it fooled the receiver a little bit. The ball carried farther than he thought it was going to and, and farther than it normally would on that pattern. And uh, as a result, there's an overthrow. And Bucksport now with third down. Third down and 10 yards to get another first down in the final minute of this third quarter here in the LTC championship game. They've got to score a lot in a short period of time here, down by 27 points. Now Carmichael flushed out of the pocket. Ziggs and Zags wants to run, gets to midfield, and I think he got a first down. He does. How about uh, making something out of nothing there? Chase Carmichael just decided at some point, I'm gonna take off and go. And he got 10 yards, a little over 10 yards. Yeah, he got pushed across the finish line there just to get that 10th yard. Good defense in the secondary by Foxcroft. No wide receivers open as Carmichael was looking to go deep. Finally, he had to scramble some pretty good defensive pressure. Up. Almost uh, getting the sack was uh, Mason McLeish. But uh, Carmichael got away and, uh, as you mentioned, picked up the 10 yards to keep the driver alive. Continues to run here. We're down to the final 30 seconds of this quarter. This one, depending on whether it's a completed pass or not, could be the final play of this third quarter and their last time with the wind at their back. And you know what? They're going to have to take a time out. I thought that that huddle took forever to break. And uh, they took a time out with 24 seconds to go. And uh, they do need to make sure they come up with something wisely here for the last play or two 
of the quarter. Yeah, you want to capitalize on these 20, 24 seconds as it turns out as much as you can. Uh, and try to get as many plays as you can. Uh, maybe at least three pass attempts. Try to get the ball downfield so if you don't score before the end of the period, at least you've got a short field to try to punch it in early in the fourth. So much more time out here. They'll have the ball first and 10 from the Ponies 48 yard line. Reminder again, tomorrow at high noon, Husson football, they take on the Mount Ida Mustangs and try to finish as ECFC champions. Danny White played a little ball at uh, Husson College in his days. Baseball. Baseball. I don't think uh, I don't think they had football at that stage. They hadn't restarted the program, I don't think, when he was there, was you, he? You're saying he's that old? Well, I'm just saying. Saying there's an incomplete pass out of the timeout, and they will get another play 18 seconds. And uh, we got another player down, and it's another Bucksport player. And man, their training staff has been busy, busy, busy tonight, huh? Oh, absolutely. It's it just it's, a, it's been a physical game, uh, it's been, it's been several, several players down, getting back up. Carrying on in terms of Danny White. Danny White's been here now. This is his ninth year as the head coach. Yeah. It doesn't seem possible. But then again, as you get uh, as old as we are, the, <laughs> the uh, years only take nine months, I believe, is how it works. That's my math, at least. He was uh, telling me this week he, he played as a player for Flash Rock. He played in two title games, uh, LTC games, against Bucksport. Yeah, I believe. In the late 90s, I think that was a bad, like 1997 and in that, uh, in that area. Joel Sankey, the head coach of Bucksport, he's the winningest coach in LTC TC history. He's over 150 wins. That's pretty good. And that's over a little over 20 years at the helm. I think 23 years. Because I know he was he was an assistant at Bangor at one point. Yep. Also uh, was down at Maine Maritime Academy yep. for a period of time. So he's uh, he's uh, a longtime coach. Matter of fact, uh, we were talking about Chase Carmichael a week or so ago, and he compared. Chase Carmichael, not necessarily in style, but in terms of success at the high school level, to a quarterback he coached uh, as an offensive coach at Bangor in Bubba Lichtenberg, yeah. which would have been in, I believe, probably the late 80s. So he said as, he's been as good as any other quarterback he's coached, and uh, that's pretty high praise given the success that the Bucksport program has had as well as the other teams that he has been associated with over the years. Tom Lichtenberg, Bubba's father, was the, one year was the head coach of the Maine Black Bears there. And one of the best lines I've ever. First of all, they were packing in the place. It was Carl Smith and Mike Buck as the quarterback. And geez, they were getting eight, nine thousand people. The place was full. But in the press conferences during the week, he didn't think there was enough people there. Wow. Yeah, and he said, he goes, I don't understand. He was kind of a southern drawl. He said, I don't get it why people don't want to grab a moon pie and an RC cola and enjoy a football game. <laughs> I don't think he realized where he was when he uttered that one, huh? Yeah, so he was around. He was there for one year. So what I did was I had I said, you know what? I haven't had a moon pie in forever. I had to go look for. A I was going to say, where where would you have found one? Well, did you have to order I, that special at Frank's Bake Shop? I or? don't know. I can't remember. But we got a hold of one. <laughs> and, uh, and had to get a moon pie because I'm not sure everybody remembered what a moon pie was. What is it? It's kind of like a wafer with marshmallow in the okay. middle. You never had a moon no. pie. No. Time out. We've got another interception here by the Ponies. Carmichael kicked off for the third time tonight. And let's see, was that Martin? That, that was uh, Jeremy Richard, Richard for uh, Foxcroft, number three for the Ponies. Again, uh, Foxcroft kind of playing a little bit of center field in deep zone, uh, just not letting the ball uh, go beyond their defensive backs. And there was. Uh, there was Richard there for the pick to go along with previous interceptions from uh, R.J. Nelson and uh, Nick Clawson, third of the game thrown by Carmichael, who I believe had only thrown four yes. in the previous nine games this year. So that pretty good correct. effort. And, of course, Foxcroft knows that Bucksport has to pass, so it makes that task a little easier. Here's Niles on the carry for the Golden Bucks. He'll get some good first down yardage up near midfield. And that's going to bring an end to the third quarter. Well, well, well. The Ponies and their fans are pretty happy after three quarters. They lead 27 to nothing. And they're going to get the wind at their back when we come.
come back for the fourth quarter next on Sports Radio 92.9, the ticket. I'm going to write for a couple minutes, Dale. You never had a moon pie? No. Anybody had a moon pie? <laughs> you had a moon pie? Toby? Yeah, they're big and monster. Had a moon pie? I never forget. Yeah, it was. Uh, ball bouncing all over the place, and uh, Bucksport finally catches a break uh, with the turnover, and uh, they're into the win now, however, <laughs> in, in the fourth quarter. So as much of a break as it is, you see that flag along the Foxcroft sideline just stiff as it uh, blows from left to right. The, the kicking uh, net is blown over on uh, this end as well. Seems like just when Bucksport gets some good luck, the wind picks up. <laughs> All right, so on the turnover by the Ponies, Foxport will get the ball. And let's see, their own 38-yard line. And they go into the, might be the stiffest wind of the night. And now, timeout on the field. And they want to, I guess, I, I think it's for a tie of a shoe down there. I think one of the Foxport players trying to tie a shoe. I'll tell you what, that's not as easy as you think it is. No. The cold fingers. No, right? cold fingers, and the Ooh. shoelace is probably moving, too. Oof. All right, you get that job done. Now a handoff, and it goes up the middle. Wardwell on the carry, and he'll pick up about four yards here on first down. So, 27 to nothing here. The Ponies with the lead uh, just turned it over. That's their first turnover of the night. I believe it is. We've checked it. Maybe one interception. Uh, yeah, there was. Uh, uh, Clawson threw an interception in the oh. first half. I think it's very late in the first half. All right, second down. Let's call it now second down and six here for the Golden Bucks from their own 47-yard line. Dropping back to pass is Carmichael. Now he'll roll to the left. He's going to run it himself. He's going to get a first down and then he'll get out of bounds. And let's see where they mark his forward progress, right around the 45-yard line of the Ponies. So a good run play there by Carmichael. He had nobody to throw to, so he picked it up with the, the legs. And he's back in business with a fresh set of downs. Yeah, Carmichael's been uh, Bucksport's leading rusher tonight. 50 yards on seven carries drops back wants to throw and almost picked off it goes incomplete 
and uh, jumping the pass route there is uh, Smith. I think, yeah, Smith. Yeah, I think he almost had another pick. Yeah, they're they're anticipating the patterns. They're, they're, they've seen them enough tonight to know uh, that uh, Bucksport, particularly going into the wind, is probably going to throw the ball a lot shorter uh, because they have to. They can't throw it deep. Uh, and so that, that narrows up the uh, the uh, length of the field that the defense has to defend. It makes it a lot easier to take those chances. All right, from the 45 of the Ponies, second down call. It's a pitch play, and it'll go to Wardwell, and he'll get a yard or two. Tough running room there. And coming up is uh, Richard on the tackle there after about a two-yard game. So now third down and long. Third down and eight here for the Ponies. And when you're down 27 to nothing, I think in any of these situations, you're probably in two-down territory. At this point, what do, you, what do you have to lose? I mean, you're playing to try to advance the next week in the state championship game. It doesn't matter if the final score is 27 to nothing or, or more if it's not in your favor. All right, third down call. Up under center is Carmichael. Drops back, wants to throw, sees a man. It's incomplete, intended for Gray. And maybe, just maybe, he could have turned and picked up a yard or two for a first down, but in and out of the hands, incomplete. And now fourth down. It's seven straight incompletions by uh, by Bucksport. As again, in this situation, Foxbuck doesn't have to cover a lot of the field because they know the pass is probably not going to go more than 10 yards beyond the line of scrimmage because of the wind in their face. 8.35 to play in the game. 8.35 left in the fourth quarter. 27 to nothing. Tony's in the lead. Here's a drop back. Want to run a screen play. That's not going to work. In the backfield, coming up to make the play is... Uh, I think that's Drew Dankin, number 87, the defensive end. Read that play, read that screen pass uh, out in the left flat to uh, Lucas Wardwell and uh, ate that up. And that means they turn it over on Dax. Not only did they uh, have to give up the ball, but they actually give up about, what, seven, ten yards of yeah. uh, turf. About ten yards. I mean, if you knew that was going to happen, it would have been better off to drop the ball, but of course you're not thinking in those terms in that situation. All right, so the Ponies take over, leading big. And let's see if they run the ball a few times here to eat up some of that clock. Here is a carry, and it's good, and coming out of bounds is gonna be number uh, 21, that's Cam Marsh. And he's got some pretty good yardage. He does go out of bounds at the end, but picks up nine on that first and run. So, Ponies. Now we'll start from the 36-yard uh, line here of the Golden Bucks. That's a long timeout briefly. I think they, uh, well, they're going to say it is a first down. So they got to move the chains. That is a first down. So that's, that's a 10-yard gain, maybe a little bit more than that, to get him to move the chains on the far side. Here we go. From the 36 yard line here. Shotgun formation for Clausen. He'll fake the handoff. He's got running room on the right side. All oh, kinds of it. Now cuts to the middle. Gets down to the 10 yard line. Oh, what a run by Clausen. He put on a great fake on uh, the handoff to Niles. And then everybody bit on that. And he had wide open spaces to get down close to the 10. He got down there and fumbled the ball on the tackle. It looks like Bucksport is uh, going to take possession. 26 yards on the game before the fumble on the tackle. Good pursuit from behind by Bucksport. Golden Bucks get the ball back with uh, 90 yards to go. How about that? That's a change of things going on here as the Golden Bucks still alive here. I think I was looking at the clock. I had said 8.35, but is that 8 or is that 9? 9, 9.10 left in the uh, in the fourth quarter. All right, so Bucksport still cooking here, trailing 27 to nothing, and now flags come down. And I think some people, they're counting players. 
like they may have too many players on the field. Well, Dale. But uh, I don't think they do. Uh, yeah, I've got an announcement to make. I, to, in order to get my story for the newspaper done yes. for the first edition, mm -hmm. it has to be done at 9.30. Uh -oh. What I'm telling you is uh, it's official. I'm not going to make that deadline. <laughs> <laughs> As it's 9.18 right now, we've still oh got boy. nine minutes left in the game. Oh, boy. Life goes on. Right fast, my <laughs> young man. All right, here's a handoff. Tom's on. Harris. And he's going to get very little yardage right, off on the carry. Couple of three yards, and that'll be it there. So back to back turnovers here for the Ponies late in the game here. On uh, fumbles. And uh, giving uh, the Bucks just hope enough, really. The Ponies are trying to really just run the clock. Yeah, that's all they're trying to do. It is just so difficult to, to ball it. And, I mean, that, you look at that flag, that's got to be blown at 25 miles an hour, maybe. Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm surprised we haven't. No. I mean, I, I, I could hang on to a ball, ball. in this weather. Oh. It's got to be like a rock oh. up there, isn't it? I don't know how you hang on to it. Somebody tackles you there. There's another run play up the middle. Very little game there. Is uh, one was carried. I think it was more well. Did you look now at Bucks running the football? We're down to eight minutes left in the game. And Reality is that you would normally think you'd be still trying to throw, but with the wind the way it is and a 27 point deficit, it's kind of hard to imagine. Uh, short of somebody breaking through a hole like Clausen did for 64 yards in the second quarter against the wind, that uh, it's going to have much of an opportunity to score. Third down, let's call it third down and six. Carmichael does want to throw this time. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. Gets rid of it, throws downfield. Picked off. Picked off by Cross at the 40 yard line. And how about this? Chase Carmichael throws four picks all season. And he throws four tonight. It is one of these nights, and don't tell me the weather isn't a factor uh, in all of There's this. certainly, and, and it's been that way for both teams, some mm. extenuating circumstances yes. there, and, you know, uh, Foscoff knows, has known basically since the first quarter that uh, Bucksport was left to throw the football, and, and there, uh, in that situation, uh, Carmichael did a great job of buying time, just couldn't find anybody open, finally threw the ball downfield, and there was Clausen for his second pick of the game. All right, let's see the ponies hang on to the ball this time, and they run it up the gut. It's Miles, and he's pushed back. And he'll gain a yard or two. And the clock continues to run as we near the seven-minute mark of the game. 27 to nothing. The ponies in the lead. They scored three touchdowns in the first quarter, and then no one scored again until 122 to play in the third quarter. So uh, it, uh, it just hasn't been one of those offensive uh, fests out here. Keep in mind, one of the touchdowns came on a special teams play. Another one came on a, on a uh, pick six. All right, this time it's Niles, and he'll get some nice running room there and get it down. Close to the 20 yard line, it'll move the chains for the Bucksport, for the uh, Bucksport ponies here. And they get a fresh set of downs to run off some more of the clock. Final score in Class C South, Cape Elizabeth 35, Gardner 13. Cape Elizabeth will face the winner of tomorrow night's Class C North Final, uh, which sends MCI to top ranked MDI. It's tomorrow night down in Bar Harbor now. Here's a handoff on a receiver run. That's uh, Jeremy Richard. And he'll get a couple of yards on the pocket. Now just six minutes to play. And the ponies ball security here now. They don't need any more points. Leading 27 to nothing. They would like to be able to milk out the rest of this fourth quarter clock and claim the LTC championship here. And who knows when they'll play. My guess is it's probably 2.30 next Saturday afternoon, usually the Class Ds. Yeah, it's Class D and B and A down in Portland, Class C game next Friday night down in uh, 
uh, up at the University of Maine in Orono. Clawson will keep and carry, and he'll get a yard or two. And let's see where they're going to spot that ball down. Another injured player for the Golden Bucks will work his way off to the sideline. They're going to spot the ball at the 16-yard line. Scowhegan 23, Lawrence nothing in the fourth quarter. I have to say something about Scowhegan. They were giving up 50 points a game here about three or four weeks ago. But uh, in the last two weeks, Brewer opened the game by scoring a touchdown last week in the semifinal on their first drive, didn't score another touchdown, and now they're Scott Egan's pitching a shutout this week. Not bad, huh? Mr. Christopher, known for all of his offense all year, and the defense comes along and does its job. Well, and, and the person I'm happiest for is their, uh, their head coach, Ryan Libby, who was the defensive coordinator for the Indians last year and took over the head coaching job this year when Matt Freeman went to Hudson University and was just kind of every time I would talk to him was lamenting the fact that the defense couldn't stop anybody, but they were <laughs> they were winning games because they could score 50 points. Well, now here is the, in the playoffs, the defense has uh, very much come alive as it looks like they'll move on to their first eight championship games in 1989. Here, it's a fourth down call for the Ponies. It's a keeper by Carson, and he gets the first down as he is brought down, but not before he reaches the uh, five yard line. Down on the ground after that tackle that is made. Timeout is called here with four minutes and 15 seconds to play in the game. Let's take a timeout here deep in the fourth quarter. The ponies leading 27 to nothing. This is Sports Radio 92 9. Ticket. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's Clausen, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Back here at Oaks Field in uh, Dover, Foxcroft. We've got a timeout on the field. Nick Lawson, the quarterback, is down after that run. He's at about the five yard line. And uh, they continue to attend to him. So while they do that, let's go ahead and go back to sports control. I know, Mark Follett, you've got some updates on a lot of things going on, including apparently another possible injury for the Celtics, too, right? Thank you. Uh, Clawson is up off the ground the and uh, Spooner will come in to run this play. It is a first down call here for the Ponies, already a leading 27 to nothing. So they're first and goal to go from the five yard line. Spooner, the junior quarterback, tall six footer there, will fake the handoff, will keep it and run it and get down inside the five. And he's tripped up at about the three yard line. So the Celtics have turned into the walking wounded. So Marcus Morris and Kyrie leave tonight's game. And uh, adding on to Hayward and Horford. And do they have back to back this weekend? Do you know? Do they play against uh, tomorrow? No, they play uh, Toronto on Sunday. Okay, but still. If they have enough players. Yeah, exactly. I, probably the Red Claws <laughs> will be yeah. uh, shorthanded here pretty soon. 
All right. Here we go. It's a handoff this time to Niles, and he gets close to the goal line. That gets Niles on the carry. So he's shy of the goal, of the goal line. line. Two to the one. All of this is chewing up the fourth quarter clock, though. Brings up a third and goal close the to the three-minute mark and counting in the game. Ponies are that far away from being LTC champions. And on to the state title game next week. I guess uh, Wells Madison must be playing tomorrow. Yeah, I actually. haven't been able to see a score for that. I uh, I don't know that for sure, but uh, that's the one game I haven't been able to account for. Today. All right, shotgun formation here for Spooner and the Ponies. Knocking on the door again. And Spooner will bobble the handoff, regather, and get close to the goal line. The Ponies think in, and now the officials say he is in. Touchdown, Spooner. And 6 4 for the Ponies. Nice uh, second effort by Spooner, who uh, bobbled that uh, snap, but stayed with it and scores the touchdown with 2.29 to play in the game. So we'll call that a two-yard touchdown run by Spooner. That makes it 33 on for the extra point to nothing. And now Stedman will try on the PAT, and the kick is good. And, the point and so that makes it 34 to nothing. The Ponies on their way to an LTC championship. We'll take our final break and come back with the final couple of minutes of this title game. You're listening to it live on Sports Radio 92.9 Ticket. game noontime tomorrow from the John Winkin complex on Husson campus there. The Eagles trying to finish off what has been a very strong season and heading into the playoffs. They play tomorrow at noon live right here on the ticket. Kickoff goes into the end zone. So that'll be a touchback and the uh, Golden Bucks will have the ball at 2.29 to go in the game. And it's a 34 to nothing score as the Ponies have started strong and have ended strong here. And uh, it's been a frustrating night here on offense by the Golden Bucks. The weather, they've uh, had the misfortune of being against the wind and not getting things done when they have the wind at the back. And you got to credit the Pony defense. They've been at the right place at the right time. Yeah, four interceptions, uh, block punt on special teams, and uh, and, a, and a Bucks 14 that seemingly had a lot of momentum uh, coming into this game never really got a chance to get started. Really, after the uh, after the uh, the coin flip to start the game, that left them having to go into the wind in the first quarter. Foxcroft used the wind at its back to great advantage and. Uh, made uh, Bucksport pay uh, with four field position as it was trying to move uh, against the wind, ultimately leading to that block punt by R.J. Nelson and Cody Labby returned for the uh, Ponies' third touchdown of the first quarter. Yeah, I mean, really, you look at that first quarter, and uh, it was 20 to nothing before Bucksport could get the wind at the back. And, and then they were, once they had the wind at their back in that situation, you, you knew what was coming if you were Foxcroft's defense, and they uh, reacted favorably to it with, uh, with the four pass interceptions, two of them coming from uh, Nick Lawson. A couple of run plays by the Golden Bucks. I think they have uh, decided maybe not to 
throw anymore. Actually, is there a new quarterback? Yes, I think I see Michael on the sideline. Maybe he's just over there getting a punt. That's what he's doing. So clock continues to run here. We're down to a minute and 10 seconds to play. Bernie, I know you've got to do some quick writing here, so I want to thank you for your help here tonight. Thanks. My pleasure. See you soon there next week at state, state time and all. Um, third down is the call, and it's a pitch play to Matt. It's to Stanton. That carries it for just a yard or two. And now we're down to the final 45 seconds. That uh, carry was by number 22, I think, Mellonfund, who's a, a freshman player. So the same and getting some of his younger players in here to kind of chance to touch the ball a time or two. And now with 27 seconds, the question is, will they have to run off another play here? We will have uh, the ceremonies, the awarding of the most uh, of the LTC championship coming up. Forgive me, I ain't sticking around. <laughs> 